and I got the recording going and I need to share my screen with you guys. If you are facing some issues, shall I present my screen? Uh, that's okay, I got it. Um, let's see. So let's see, let's look at the changes since last time. Okay, I think we record and load source. Let's find the record. Fold size. Okay, great. Source. Okay, yeah, I mean, I don't really have much to say on this. Um, so, because this, I mean, this looks good, right? But let's write a test for it. Um, because I mean, as far as as far as I can see here, this is you know this is this is what you want, right? Um, but you know that then then you need to to know what you want to do with it, right? Um, I think you might you might want to write like a full example, right, in your test, where you you know, you, you use K fold for something, right? Because your goal and to give Hamacho a little background here, so. The goal here is to work towards the auto ML project um, and doing some pre-work towards that. Um, and so, because uh, that was one of the project ideas, and that was what. Um, uh, can you? I, I want to make sure. So, is it? It's Sandhya. Is that correct? Or? Oh yeah, it's Sanidhya. San Sanidhya. Sanidhya. Yeah. Okay. Sanidhya. Sanidhya. All right. Sorry. Sorry. I mean, I'll probably ask you a couple more times. I just want to make sure um, I'm <laughs> saying it right. Sanitia. Sanitia. All right. Okay. Um, so, so, so we're working towards the, um, the, um, the auto ML project. And, uh, and so, so the first idea here was to, to implement implement k-fold um, and I'm not sure so I can't remember why did you want to implement k-fold um, first like why was this your first target uh, actually uh, like in auto ml uh, we will be having um, uh, one model or a single model with multiple hyper with many hyperparameters right uh, like uh, mm -hmm. uh, we need to compare them with different hyperparameters uh, like one of the uh, grid search method like which i have mentioned in my proposal yeah uh, it uh, com basically compares uh, on the basis of accuracy so mm -hmm. according to me uh, like k fold accuracy uh, uh, is a perfect way to measure the accuracies of different models mm -hmm. because on uh, training, speci especially in the case of neural networks and other things, if you would train for one time, then you will train for another time, you may get uh, different accuracies. So I thought that K4 accuracy uh, will like uh, give us more accurate uh, accuracies and then we will be able to uh, compare the models and choose the model with the best accuracy. Cool. Cool. Okay. Great. Um, yeah, so I uh, think, yeah, go for it. Watch you. Yeah, uh, sorry. I, I, I just need to know a bit more on this. So this is a K fold cross validation, right? Or something else? Uh, Sorry, this. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you can. Go. Yeah. Yeah. So I just want to know this is, uh, you're talking about cross validation, right? Or it's something else? Uh, uh, basically, uh, I, uh, I'm comparing the whole data, like training and test data, on uh, with the help of K-folds, not only on the cross-validation dat uh, data uh -huh. set. So, like K-fold on the whole thing. Uh, I will be uh, testing the data, the data which will be used for testing. Uh, like it can be anything, training or test, and we have to like uh, it should work on any of the data sets. K-fold. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I just want to know the motivation. So the motivation behind this is. Uh, first thing is we if we have a large data data set, then we can basically use K fold to kind of not load the whole thing into memory at once. The other thing is uh, we can basically like train on nine folds and just validate on one fold uh, to right. Yeah, no? yeah, that's my idea. Okay, okay, yeah. Okay, yeah, then then it's cool. Uh, yeah, just one one more thing. So, AutoML doesn't have their own K-fold cross uh, validation, or uh, 
Well, like so because they will have some efficient way to do that. We're implementing our at this at this point. Okay. But, yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So that's the that's the, the goal of the project was to, was to implement auto ML. Um, and then so the the first part of that is you know like a hyperparameter tuning and stuff, and then the next part uh, was you know figuring out how to include the data pre-processing operations um, and then sort of pre-process the data in different ways um, and this and that that second part does didn't necessarily as a part of the project idea um, didn't necessarily have you know that wasn't a uh, hard requirement that it be part of a proposal but that's just for background on, on where we wanted to go with that um, it's eventually mm -hmm. hyperparameter okay. tuning and automated data pre-processing um, so that's just sort of long term um, yeah, so I don't really have much more to say about this right now. Um, I think that the flushing out the example and the test um, is is really the best way to go because then we can provide you with more feedback, right? Um, but you know, I think you know, this is this is how you want it. This is how you would use the API. Uh, that is the correct usage. Um, so the only other thing that I would say is is. You're going to find as you go through this, right, and, and if you're implementing this within, so so we were ho the goal was to implement ML as like a model itself, right, and so you would you would you you would specify you know when you're doing your, your train command, right, you would say model is auto ML, um, and then the auto ML model will you know take uh, you know it'll use other models, right, and it'll take data sources and those data sources um, like if we were to look at a existing model um, so let's look at an existing model um, where's a good one oh, let's look at socket oh god we gotta get rid of that stuff um, so, so if we look at an existing model um, we're actually getting a, well, and this should be a source's context, but uh, the type here is wrong. But this is a source's context object, which, let's see, let's go to this. This is, this is not correct. It is a type in is wrong. It's a source's context object. And so we're calling with features on that. So you're actually going to get a source's context um, when you're in your model. Um, and you, you can, can pass, pass, can you pass, pass that, that to load? I think you can pass that to load. Um, but let's see, can you pass that to load? You may not be able to pass that to load. That might be an open issue. Um, let's see, where is that? Yeah, yeah, I think we need to, to change that. We should probably make sure that we can pass that to load. Um, cause cause so, 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 sorry, the point of this is, um, what you're going to get if you're in a model is you're going to end up with a, like if you're in train, you'll, you'll have a sources context. And actually we should go through and flag all those too. Let me make some notes here. Um, and this is part of a just general stuff. So, uh, all right. Um, let's see. Update. Pins. Okay. So, so we, we have, have some things that we could update here that we know that we could do easily. So, um, and then, okay, load, high level load should take, um, source, oh, well, that's the same thing. Um, oh, high level load, yeah, it should take sources. All right, um, we just need to make issues out of these. Um, all right, so, so we, we need to do this after accuracy staging is merged. Sorry, I'm not explaining. Okay, okay so, so basically, this, this type hint is wrong, wrong um, and it should be sources, sources context. context. Um, and your usage of load here um, will work. I believe this works for like a source. And let's just look at it. Um, 
So you had to grab your email, I'm not sure. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. So, so if you, you look, look at, at high, high level, level, okay, yeah. if you look at high level and you look at records of sources, you see, okay, it does work for sources context. Okay, so that does work. Um, so this does work. So basically, if you were to pass, if you were in a model, right, and you were past the sources context, um, which this should be sources context, and you passed and you, you called kfold, Right, your K fold, and then you passed it to load. You this will work. This will end up working either way um, because it'll just it'll just load the it'll just call records sources so dot records. Um, so there's no action needed there. I would just flush out. I would flush out your usage of this right to to actually use it with a model um, right, right or, or two. two. So maybe. Uh, and this is right, you know, this sort of goes beyond testing your, your, your test here. So make sure your test is still work. Is your test still working? I guess we would know from this. Um, it looks like it might not be working. So, freaking should I? Okay. Um, yeah, okay. So, so just make sure the test works, right? Um, Make sure test, test works and makes sense. sense. Uh, and then, then start working on how you'd use this. And I can't remember what was that thing. It starts with the G. Um, uh, the method of um, doing the validation. Yeah, grid search. Yeah, grid search. Yeah, yeah. You could start on grid search, or you could start on, you know, whatever, whatever you think you should. If 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 you're going to use this within grid search, then you could start on grid search, right? So I think you you've got the, you know, you're doing the right approach here. Um, just keep flushing it out, right? Um, just keep keep exploring. Uh, is there anything else you wanted to talk about? Uh, no, that's it. Uh... All right, great. And let's see, we have. Okay. Um, and then, yeah, so. Okay, and then actually. Uh, actually, uh, like, I, I have a doubt. Yeah. Uh, uh, in this, uh, this function is just uh, creating n folds. Uh. And uh, I need to uh, train data on, suppose there are five folds, then I need to train data on four folds and uh, test it on one fold. So do I need to create another function for this or uh, uh, it will be okay if I can merge this into a one function? Uh, okay. Merging it into one function would be a bit beneficial, but... Uh... Merge it into one function. So what do you mean? Sorry, can you say that again? Uh, yeah. Uh, so basically, uh, in I'm uh, saying that, uh, like initial, my idea was to create two functions. One was splitting the, the, the data into n folds, and another function which I will be creating uh, very soon uh, th that will uh, return me the accuracies from the with the help of kfold techniques. Uh, but uh, uh, now I'm saying that instead of uh, uh, like uh, if we could uh, merge these two functions into a single function, uh, whether that will be okay. So one to do training and one to do accuracy would be yeah, one approach uh, and the other approach is both of that in one function. Yeah. Um, I guess, you know, from the, from a, I don't, I think, I think I'm not fully understanding, but from a basic sort of architecture principle, I would say, let's just, if you're going to just, if you're, if you end up doing two, two functions like what is you could do two functions right and then you could just call them both from another function right and have it be one function or is there some kind of downside from that right because it's usually better to split things up as much as possible you know just from a basic software engineering standpoint right um is there a down is there a downside to that or 
Uh, yeah, okay. I will go with two functions. Like, I okay. don't think there is much downside to it. Okay. All right. Yeah. And let's see. Okay. Great. Cool. So yeah. Um. We'll start with two functions. Uh, yeah, because then we can always merge them if we decide that 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 it doesn't make sense. Yeah, two yeah. functions is good. I think this is what uh, Scikit also does. Scikit okay. learn. So they have a separate for making folds, and then they can use on training and testing. Okay. I think I have to check, but that is a better way. I think. Okay. Okay. Let's see. All right. Um, and then I think we have Hashim. So Hashim, how's it going with you? I still, I still. Did we get those things merged? I saw that. Let's see. Look at it, our notes. We have our cache download, CSV delimiter. I still haven't reviewed the confidence VR. Um, we're in between models. Let's see. So you, we, were you working on the? What, what were you? What have you been up to? Uh, yeah, I was working on the moving between models example. Uh, actually, uh, uh, embedding it into the documentation and testing. Nice. I was done with the example itself, but uh, yeah, I, I think yeah. I'm done with the whole thing now. Uh, Sweet. Yeah, it's supposed to be reviewed now. All right. Examples, notebooks. Okay. Uh, I'm actually using uh, another extension to uh, make the symbolic links. Okay. So yeah, I wasn't sure about that if we want that or do we want to make a copy like you suggested the other day. Let's see. Oh, okay. I had so already you have a link. Uh, okay. made the links. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, let's see. Okay. Uh, the only note I have, let's see, let's see, let's just make sure. Okay. Yeah, just because, let's, uh, let's just lowercase that because we don't have anything. That's not that way anywhere else. Okay, sure. so great. Okay, and you cut these off. Perfect. Okay, because yeah, it wasn't rendering. I remember. Okay, so now I can go view it. Oops. No. Come on, get up. Oh, really? I thought. Look. I thought the last time it was mad because there was like a million rows. Why can't it render it now? Um, you know, let's just pull it down because then we can see it. Yeah, you can see it in the docs now. So I need to. Come on, that docs. Yeah, we'll just look at it in the docs. Let's 
Which name my Python 3 is not known. Human selection and move. I need to update settings. Let's try that. I think I uh, did install that. Okay, let's see. Uh, or did I miss it out? Um, I remember uh, taking care of that dependency. Okay. Maybe it is. It could just be an updated Sphinx. Um, let's see. So, let's see, what was it again? I have Python. Three pigments, Luxor. I have Python three is not known. So what do you have here? Let's collapse this guy. So MB Sphinx, MB Sphinx link. Seems like test book. Ooh, hey, look at that. Yeah, it's in uh CI slash uh, dependencies dot sh. Okay. And is it this one? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. So we must need to add it to set up here. Okay. Let's see. So examples no folks. Okay. Um, test book. Okay. Let me just one second. Okay, docs come off. Okay. So let's see, I think because yeah, are you gonna use get grab test book? Let's see where we're going to use test book here. Okay, so if we're going to use it in test notebooks, then we should probably add that to the dev dependencies. So, wait, did I just get rid of that? Okay. All right. Yeah, so we should probably add this to the dev dependencies if it's in the main branch. Um, and then docs, so IPython. Okay, so you installed IPython here. So I think, does it need, okay, so it might need pandoc too. Okay, so let's look at requirements. Uh, let's just, you're always cutting out. Oh, sorry. I think, is that, can you hear me better? Yeah. I okay. think it might be my internet. I'm not sure. Okay. Yeah, I, I hear you a little choppy too. Okay, so let's do, let's try this. Um, do we have, okay, so test book. Let's see. So now let's try to build the docs here. Is pandoc is pandoc for sure a requirement for this? Or like how is pandoc involved here? Uh Hashim left, I think he's at network issues he will resign. Thank you. Be nice if we can make Pandoc. Um, damn, okay. Okay, wait, look at this. Oh, damn. Convert directly to docutils without intermediate RST. OK. 
the Sphinx can easily produce attacking structure from the down. Escape our tail or reliably produce desired parts. Yeah, this is what I was saying. Add notebook directive. Support song. What is this? Nine days ago. Are people working on this? Alternative oh, to renders. Damn. Wow, okay. Oh, is it Sorry, I dropped from the call previously. No worries, no worries. Okay, so I was just, just wondering because pan that sounds like Pandoc is a requirement here. I must have a Pandoc. Um Yeah, okay. Okay, so it's built. So we got we got a successful build. Um, Python does show me HTTP server. Okay, so examples. Or notebooks, great. Going between models. So, okay, so let's see. Is this so? Is this is it showing up like this because of this NB link thing? You mean the headings? Uh, yeah, like when we click into moving between models, it's showing import packages, build our data set, right? And then we click in and then it's actually showing us, let's see, yeah, moving between models and then we click in and then it says move between models link. Okay, okay so, so this is, is or no, no is this docs, docs examples, notebooks, or is this, okay, so we have moving between models. This says moving between models link. So could we just say or let's see. So could, could, could we just say in the index notebooks. Oh come on, notebooks. So if we just say moving between models and then we make let's see. If we make this, we can just get rid of this, um, uh, like the intermediary one. Let's see. So we can just take this NB link and we can just make it because now, right now, we have two files. I, maybe that was that just because you were just trying to, um, you were trying to figure out the link stuff by moving between. Models B link. So, um, docs, examples, notebooks. Oops. All right, so now we have these two in here, and this is moving between models. Okay, so now we have HTTP. So let's try this again. So we have notebooks. All right, okay, so I was just trying to see, what did I do here? 
So I was trying to see if we could get rid of this double sort of we have like this double document going on here where we had a moving between models and then that link to moving between models link. And so then we just ended up with we just ended up with moving between models link becomes moving between models. Um, and then Are you starting the server or not? Okay, there you go. Okay, I see what happens. So it doesn't say the top level. This is why you did that, I, right? It doesn't say because now you have no books. So, so we, we just put, put. If we just put moving between models in here and it does the NB link, then you lose the header for some reason. Weird. Or I guess there is no header. I guess there is no header. Because each... Interesting. Oh, now it rendered. So maybe... Oh, okay, so we have... These are marked down. So maybe if we ended up with a... So if we put another, if we put a header on this that said, so right now this is what happened. I spent many hours fighting something like this. I was like, what's going on? Like I was deep into the the docutil source code saying there has to be a bug because I had done this where I'd made everything the same header level. And then I was like, why is there no document title like why does it think the document title is the same as all of the subheadings because i'd put the same number of hashes in front of it and so uh, maybe if we just do if we just take a look at that that examples notebooks moving between models and we say um so maybe if we just put a different level heading on it and say moving between models. Um, this notebook shows you how. So maybe if we put another heading on it, it'll it'll show up like with the correct uh, you know levels. Okay. And then the other thing is that um, so we're displaying the notebook here. We're so we're displaying the notebook, but it'd be nice if we had a way to download the notebook. Because this sort of this displays it, but it doesn't say, "Hey, download me from here." You know. Um, so how could we do that? Um, is there a way for this guy to say? Actually, no. Execution. Uh, I can uh, look into it and uh, follow up on that. Okay, great. Yeah, because I think that would be, you know, some people are going to want to download the, you know, people will probably want to download the notebook right away, right? Um, you know, they'll want to view it and yeah, they'll want to download that it, makes right? Sense. Um, so, so even if it's just, yeah, ideally we'd find a sort of, there's, there's some kind of nice way to, you know, built-in way to do it. Um, let's see, so, okay. So. I'm sorry, I uh, missed the most of what you have been saying. Oh, so sorry. Yeah. I'll have to follow up with that recording. Yeah, and I, I will. I, you know, I'll make some notes here. Um, so essentially, what? Yeah, and, and I don't know. So hopefully, it's not cutting out now. But basically, what I was saying is, uh, I noticed that 
that um, we had multiple levels of headings. Um, and so we tried putting a top level heading on here to see if um, maybe that, that ends up actually creating a uh, heading on the notebooks page because right now the notebooks page displays as if it was just you know the the top level of this document for some reason I see Unexpected indentation. Okay, interesting. All right, so we have two two open issues here, basically. Um, cause... Yeah, I think uh, that was the error you get uh, when you directly try to open the notebook. Ah. Let's see. Because I think uh, the Sphinx, uh, the notebook uh, extension doesn't recognize it as a Python file, and it throws out that error. Hmm. It tries to read it as a Python file. Okay. Okay. Wait a minute. So. So let's see. Let's see. What do I have now? So. So what I did was I made it so that. Uh, wait a minute. NB link. All right, so I made and I removed this move between models file that just had the talk tree with a link. And then I did. Then I made the link file to move between models file. And what happens then is the, the problem here is that this extension is odd. Um, the right way to do this is with docutils. Um, because I'm sure Notebooks. Automatically executed. Notebooks without stored output shells. So let me speak. Edit conf. What does this do? Display data for me. Uh, um, what are we trying to do here, actually? Well, I'm trying to understand what they're doing because their open issue on why they need Pandoc is basically what I was expecting their extension to do. Because so what what the way that that recommon mark works, which is the way that 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 you that the extension that makes Markdown available to Sphinx is they go in and they read. Um, they, they basically read the markdown file and they create, I'm just going to look at it. Um, no, no, no. Where did it go? Uh, is it here? Auto struct five transform. I think this is it. Parse ref. Talk tree. No, is this not it? 
auto automatically generate for code blocks syntax. Node literal block. Okay, now maybe it's this one parser. So they read the or is this using something else? Oh it's common is it common work? They basically read in, oh yeah, so they read in the markdown file, they parse all the blocks out of the markdown file, and then they turn them into these, sphinx, like Sphinx has, or DocuTools has this concept of like, this. they have this, yeah, they have these nodes, and that is what I was expecting the thing to do, um, this NV Sphinx to do, but it, what they're actually doing is, they and this is why they end up with weird behavior is because they my at least my guess is because they end up actually just building restructured text instead of building the intermediary format and that probably ends up with weird headings and stuff because what happened was i changed the so the link worked where did it go so this is what happens when we when we have just you know Basically, when we make the um, when we make the link moving between models, so we put this. This is the index page for notebooks, right, with the table of contents of all the notebooks that we have. And so we have that moving between. So basically, if we make the link, if, if we, we get, get rid of this intermediary one where you had just, just a talk tree, tree that has the link in the talk tree, um, then and you make just the just the link in the talk tree of the notebooks, which, which I'm, I'm assuming, assuming you probably ran into all this. But then you end up with, then you end up with this, which doesn't make any sense, right? Like it's just all of the the headers in that in that model or in that notebook, right? Like all of the individual sections. So then, what we try to do? Can you hear me now? How shame? Okay. I'm re-explaining this, so maybe I, if you can't hear me, then maybe I shouldn't be re-explaining this. But uh, slash pop. So then, what we try to do is we, we'll just do it one more time because I wasn't sure of what was exactly. happening either. So then, what we tried to do is we basically went and took the, we added another, another heading. heading. We added a heading that's at a different level, and I think this is where it blows up. Is if you had to add a at a, a real, real heading, heading now the, the restructured, restructured text, text that it generates. generates I think, I think it, it generates, generates the wrong, wrong something. Something goes horribly wrong here, and it blows up um, when it generates that talk tree. I'm betting um, because the and let's see, yeah, unexpected indentation. So NB link seven. So it's generating. I think it's because it's generating the. And it maybe maybe this is what he's saying. Maybe this is what you were saying, Hashim, about the link. What happens if we just put the notebook file there? Um, So we got Python notebook. Um, notebook. Then does it blow up? So is this what you're talking about the, with the link? If it's a link, because this would be interesting, right? If it's a link, then we'd know that we know we should just create a symbolic link. No, okay, there's just something wrong with the NV, NV, whatever thing. Because as soon as you create a, a header of a different level, it blows up. Okay, um, well, this is good to know. Um, let's see. Um, well, hmm. 
So what we can always do is you can have that level of indirection. Yeah, that that's a that's one approach. I wonder, does Sphinx have a in, like Sphinx? Sphinx include RST. Do I have like an include directive? I think there is an include directive. I think there's a way to just include the file because you could just do this if you had um, where is it I swear there was a way to do this directives and sections Include, da, 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 da. there may be just a way, instead of to do that talk tree and then do the, there may be a way to do instead of the talk tree and then the, um, if I need that. it's okay, people can click through. Uh, well, I just did up with one more file. That's the thing. Um, so it's good. I swear there was a way to include one document from the other. Um, the other thing that you could do is you could say, where are these people? Okay. Where are these people and what are their issues? <laughs> Let's see. Demarcation warning. Uh, make text fails. Uh, code box. I, I think all of their issues stem from the fact that they're not doing that. Okay. Uh, I don't know what these things. This one will better. Hmm. You know, let's not worry too much about this right now. Um, let's not worry too much about this right now. Yeah. Um, I wonder. Do they? What happens when you do? We can. Let's see, we could just link, you know what you could do is you could just have a talk tree of notebooks and you could link to the, no, oh, that's okay, that's going to be a problem too. If you link to the GitHub version, then you're going to be like, you know, you'll end up, so you, if you link to the GitHub version, you you may end up linking to like, you'd want you'd want to link to the, the you know, whatever version of the, the Sphinx docs that we just built are, so you'd want to link to like the tag or something. I wonder if you can you can do that, like Sphinx. Um, so, for example, okay, here's what I'm trying to say. So, for example, docs index. So, you can have like you could have a talk tree right in your notebooks, and you could just link to the GitHub version of the Python notebook, right? Um, now, now then then they'd be able to download the file directly. Um, the, the problem is that you'd need to make sure that you're linking to the right version of things. Um, so I wonder if you can do like uh, Sphinx substitute uh, config RST. Because if you could substitute this, um, no, if you can like grab the version from the Sphinx config, because we have, I don't know if this works or not, but if, you know, we have this conf file right which basically that has the version in it um and so um so if you could grab the version from there then you could format you could like you know input you could sort of like format your url so that they accept the version so that they would go to the right version i mean because you'd need to know you'd need to know the 
the latest release so that you're linking back to the latest release um, because or else you'd, you'd end up like on the master branch of that that notebook um, and that may not be what you wanted um, for it, when the docs are released. Um, I don't know. Let's not worry about how we're going to include them in the docs for now. Um, let's let's leave that to a later date um, and we can sort of focus on we can focus on um, we can focus on just the testing and putting them in the examples folder and we'll figure out how we're going to put them in the, in the documentation website later since we have time before we release. Um, does that sound good? Hopefully you can hear me. Maybe you might not be able to hear me then. That wouldn't sound good. All right. Uh, I can hear you okay, now. Okay, great. <laughs> Uh, like I said, I missed most of it, so I will follow up with the recording. Okay. Sorry about that. No worries. Okay. So let's skip. Let's skip um, the docs site. Uh, I've been uh, disconnecting on and off, and I have uh, like no idea what's going okay. on. Okay. Okay. <laughs> let's skip adding the notebooks. Um, and then uh, let's focus on testing for and, and content. So we can figure this out. All right, anything, anything from, from anyone else? else? Anybody got any any last final opens here? Uh, have you also seen the test? Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, yeah. Let me look at the test. Hey John, uh, yeah. I gotta go now. All right, uh, sounds good. Um, yeah, we'll 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 be right up here anyway. So have a good one. Thanks for joining. Bye. Bye. All right, so we're uh, to uh, All right, um, and then there's the test here. Okay, so what's going on with this cache download? So, inject cache download. So, how does that how does that work? I'm sorry. So, how does the cache download stuff work? Or, and why why are you doing this? Uh uh, the execute call, uh, cell call. Uh, the cache download stuff. Yeah, so basically I'm mocking it here. Uh, uh, since we didn't want uh, 
it to be downloading the file during the the exam the test running mm -hmm. uh. okay let's 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 uh let's let's um let's talk about this a different day then because i think you know it'll be better once we have a, a solid internet connection Great. Well, we'll wrap it up for the day then. Um, anything else? Okay, thank you. Uh -huh. That's it. Great. All right. Thanks, everyone. Have a good one. Bye. Thank you. Oh, oh, oh Suhanshu, did you? I didn't see you join. Did you want to talk about anything? Like, I, I just wanted to show you how I'm doing with the ice cream demo. Oh, okay, so great. Yeah. Time for the yeah, 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 yeah. I have got time, yeah. Sure, so I can share my screen. Great. So, uh, so is, is my screen visible? Yep. Okay, so previously what we had done is we had created the uh, the pre-process data set. Mm -hmm. So for uh, right now, uh, what I have done here is we have created the training part. Uh, and uh, we are just training the train, uh, running the training code here. And I have also added the accuracy part for it. Mm -hmm. And for the test data set, what I have done here is I have created another CSV file. So it has a city and its state and all the months regarding it. Mm -hmm. And uh, yes, then using that, I'm actually uh, running the predict method. So as you can see, it actually works fine. All right. No way. All right. This is great. Yes. So you've got, I mean, you've got it, you've got it now, right? You've trained the model and you're doing the predictions. Yes. Sweet. Wow. That's great. Nice job. Very cool. Very cool. Sweet. This is great. So this is the prediction. All right. Hey, look at that. And what is the uh, prediction input looks like? What does the input to predictions look like? It says. Uh, so for the prediction, thing. I have created another test data set. Mm -hmm. So for test data set is something like this. Nice. Nice. So it has different city and a different state. Uh, and this test data set is actually not available in the training data set. OK, great. Great. Cool. Yes. Wow, this is great. Good job. Good job. Very cool. Yes, so that much part is done. All right. So let's see. I think, you know, what, 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 let's, let's look at the, the issue here. I mean, I think you pretty much got that. That was the, the, that was, that was, that's great. Um, I think most of it is really just writing up, you know, and explaining what's going on here then, you know, um, I think that's really the, the bulk of it. And do you think like I should replace this with the code itself? Like we have done. It yes. Before? Let's replace that with the code itself. Um, because, um, because then we'll have it all in, in one file, you know? Yes. Mm. Okay. Um, let's see. Yeah. Okay. And, wow. And one more thing I had to say is, uh, for the, uh, the training part, I'm actually using the TensorFlow model. Okay, cool. Cool. So will, that's great. Will that be any problem? No, no. I mean, I don't think so. Not at all. Um, I think that's great. You know, it's fun. It's always fun to show people that they're using a neural network. Um, so people like that. Um, let's see. Okay. So da, 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 let's just go. I want to look at the working uh, pre-generating 
So you're generating the data set um, for er, pre-processing, or let's say you're generating the data set. Um, you're um, doing the, and then you're doing the train. Train. Yes. Train. Training. Okay, great. Um, so I think the one thing is that, you know, we'll want to basically take the so ice cream. Okay. What do we have? Okay, so city month sales. Okay. Um, okay. I think this is it, yeah. Just trying to reread the issue here. Uh, it's 599. Um, we'll make operations. And da, da, da. I mean, yeah, looking good. Looking good. Um, cool. Uh, okay, so I think the, the last thing really is that um, um, we. Okay, so. That pre-process, so the pre-processing stuff where you generated the data set, right, like that pre-processed CSV, that would be the one that we want to give to the users, right? Um, because we're sort of, you know, we we did this ourselves to, to create this fake data set, right? Like you did this to create the fake data set. Um, but to the to the end user, right, we're, we're trying to tell them, you, or wait a minute, let's see. Um, oh, yeah, so this... The pre-processed data set, let's see. No, the data set, okay, let me see, let me see again. It was the data set that's used for training should have, like, should have month, like, the data set that we give them to train on should be, yeah, city, month, and sales, right? Or let's see, what did you have there? What do you have in your... So, for the training... Uh... So uh, I have given all of them. Okay, yeah. So month population. Okay, so so let's see. The data set that they what we give them should have yeah. So when you train the model, you want month, population, temperature, city, and state. Yeah. Um, yes. Well, let's see. When you train the model, do you care about? Do you even care about city and state? Um, I don't think TensorFlow, the TensorFlow model is not going to use city and state because they're, they're strings. It's going to ignore them, I think. Right? Yes. That's why like I went with the TensorFlow mm -hmm. model okay. because it was working fine with the strings. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's see. So, yeah, I think because it just ignores those strings. Um, so, let's see. So, model features. So, I think what we want to do here is we want to take the... Okay, because if we think about this from the end user perspective, right? What the you you've you've generated? I think you know you've generated stuff that we've used to write the tutorial here, and then now I think what we need to do is we need to trim some of it down, right? Um, we want to record the work that you've done so that we know how it happened, and then we want to trim some of it down so that um, so that the end users see sort of, you know, the, the subset of the problem that we want them to be focused on, right? Um, and so their their problem, right, that they're presented with in this tutorial was basically, or should, should basically be, you have a city, like a city with, you know, the state in this case, right? So they have a city and a state, and they have a month, right? And then they have the sales data, right, for that month. And 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 so what they needed to do then, so that is their starting data set, right? Let me write this down. So starting data set, so, so from end user perspective. Um, starting data set uh, has city, state, um, uh, month sales. And so they need to write operations to, to get, get population, population and 
temperature. Um, okay, so yeah, they need to write operations to get population and to get temperature, right? Because they'll know, then they know that if they train a model, right, and they have, they know that what they want as the inputs to train is basically month population temperature. Uh, or, yeah, or let's see. Maybe, maybe they just want even temperature and population, right? Temperature and population as it relates to sales, right? Yes. That's probably yes. what they really want to train on, right? Um, yes. Because that, okay, so let's write that down. So uh, they want to train a model uh, on population and temperature. to predict sales. OK. Um, and so, yeah, so our train, our train in accuracy and predict command should be population and temperature. So then any time we do a, OK, so yeah, so this the features should be population and temperature, because then they'll have this generic model that takes you know, population and temperature, and it can tell you how many ice cream sales you should get, right? Rega aside from the, the culture or whatever area that they're in and how much they like ice cream. <laughs> um, but, okay, so that's that's what they care about, which means that the data set we give them, yeah, should be city, month, and sales. And then they'll write those operations, which is the ones that you wrote, right? Um, and so we show them in the train flow, um, or we could do, I think this inter, intermediary idea is a, I think that doing the intermediary one is a really good plan. Um, so, so having, having that, that, you know, the pre-processed pre CSV file. file. Um, so, so, so the, the only thing that we need to, uh, like, so, so that the, the only thing that we're going to take away here from the end user perspective is the one that generates the sales, sales right? Okay. Right. right. Yeah. Because yeah, then, then, so, so, so you'll, you'll basically, basically take, take that, that and you could maybe write it a test case somewhere else that it just runs the sales generation. generation. Um, and, and like, like or, or let's see, see. What, what do we do, do with that? that? Um, let's see. Let's just let's just leave it all in there for now. Right. And you can show or let's see. Yeah. Let's leave it all in there for now. Um. And you know, write, explain, explain everything, right? And then we can figure out, okay, what do we if we want to? And don't bother explaining. Don't bother explaining how you generated the sales, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, start start them with that data set of the sales, right? And then explain to them, you know, hey, you know, we're gonna we know that that population temperature. Are, are probably the way that we're going to protect sales. So we need to write these operations, give them a rundown of, of how you wrote the operations, and then explain, okay, here's, we're going to do a, we're going to pre-process this data set, you know, create this intermediary file, this data source, right, which is going to be our, our pre-processed CSV, um, and then sit, and then go train the model and, and do the prediction and such. All right. Okay. Does that... So that should be okay. So that should be in the in the ice cream sales .rst file, or should I like create another? File? No, that should all yeah, that should all be in the in the ice cream sales rst. Okay. Yeah, yeah, sweet. Um, and then yeah, just don't don't bother explaining the sales thing. And I would put that operation, you know, because it's all in one file right now. So I would split the the first thing you should probably do is, is split that generating the sales. Um, so split, uh, put sales generation, uh, operation in own file. Um, and then, uh, we don't need to show this to end user, uh, cause that they don't care about this. Um, and so... Let's see. Um, we just need to we just need to tell them that it's a dummy data set, right? Uh, yes. Give them the data set we generated, 
and tell them okay um let's see great um and then so we'll explain starting at we have so starting at we have this dummy data set of ice cream sales and then dot 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 um and then you know explain that we want to you know explain what we want to predict um we want to predict um sales given city state months uh, and then you know run them run them through your process okay awesome very cool um great great work all right anything else you wanted to talk about or on on that note or anything else oh no that's it. thank you all right hey great work very exciting thanks everyone and have a great rest of your day bye bye bye